Let's move on to this. Okay. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A team. Yes, time that right. There you go. The A Team, another one of those uh, typically 80s intros, the narration, the voiceover at the beginning. What what have we done so far? Knight Rider. Which had one. Yeah, Street Hawk. Which had one. Uh, Airwolf, we haven't done yet, but, but that, that, had, that one. had one. Yeah. Can you think of any others? I'm sure there was. A Magnum few. had one, didn't it? No. Oh, no, it didn't, did it? No. Magnum had a different theme tune to begin with. It did, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know that until you showed me that. It was really depressing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was rubbish. And then it became this... Dun, 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 dun. The one we love. Another Mike Post theme tune, actually, wasn't it? Who? He wrote the A-Team as well. Did he? Yeah, I'm sure it was Mike Post, but hey-ho. So, yeah, but if you watch the pilot episode of the A-Team, Mexican Sleigh Ride, it's called, they didn't have that famous intro on the pilot episode. Obviously waited till it had got commissioned to, yeah. to do that. Can we start off by talking about A-Team, just the one thing that we both spoke about the other day, which is actually on this cloth... In front of us now, which you, if you're listening, the, you can't the see. The A-Team van. The colour of the A-Team van. Did you just van. look at your time then? No. Are we boring you? No. You looked at the watch then? I didn't. You did? The colour of the A-Team van. Don't don't talk to me like that, Jason. Change your attitude. The colour of the A-Team van. That's better. Yes. See, see I, I'm confused. Really confused. I mean... The black... No, don't get that one out yet. The black A-Team van of the 80s, the toy... The A Team van was completely black. What's that one then? This is a 2000 A Team van. I think it was 2000. What's the date on it? 2010, obviously. This is for the film that came out. Oh, is it the film one? Oh, That's that. grey and black. However, Greg's got an 80s duvet cover here that we're using, and the A Team van is grey and black. Grey at the top, black grey at, at the, the top, bottom. black above, uh, below the red. Now, I, the, my memory of the A Team van. Is black. that it's black. Black. With a red stripe, don't it? I don't know. I don't ever remember. It confused me when I was a kid, the grey and black thing as well, because I saw other images of it with grey and black where I just thought it was black. The original A-Team van that I owned as a kid was just black with the red stripe. So Same as me? Yeah. We're, confu- we're confused I, about I that. I genuinely part. don't know what that's all about. Not but, me. I mean, this is official merchandise, this cloth. Yeah, from 1983. And it's grey and black. And it's grey and black. And as a kid, I never knew what I never understood that. So we're confused, aren't we? Very confused. So if you know anything about this, let us know. Was it grey and black? Did we just do? Are we just blanking that out? Was it a trick of the light on the TV series that it always looked black? Well, was the van in the first episode, the pilot? I don't think it was. Was it? Uh, I can't remember. I don't think it was. Well, obviously, it came in the first season, didn't it? Well, um, you've watched them recently, haven't you? No, not recently. No. I thought you'd watch them all. No, no. Your research is terrible for this. I'm just going on my memories, which is what our listeners will be going by. Listeners? Yeah. Did you say listeners? Nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mum. Yeah. How you doing? You all right? Thanks. I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on then. Give us some facts then, Jace. Uh, A-Team started in America in 1983 and ran to 1987. And it was obviously about a group of ex-Army Special Forces guys. How many series is that then? It was five seasons. Is that all? Yeah. Uh, who were on the run for the crime they did not commit, as it says in the opening uh, intro there. Um, they worked as soldiers of fortune. That was the phrase, wasn't it? Well, I've got something here if you want me to read that. It yeah. says, the A-team was sent on a, a mission to rob the bank of some bank somewhere, of, go- of gold bullion, when the intent, with the intent of hel- helping in, in the Vietnam War. So they were set up. Yeah. Is that what it's saying? Probably. They succeeded only to find their commanding officer had been murdered in a treacherous double cross at the head... And, oh, Andy's headquarters were burnt to the ground. Unable to prove that they were acting under his orders, they were sent to a maximum security prison. And well, then they, they promptly escaped. Es- promptly escaped. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, so that's what I've... If done. you can find them. Well, if you can hire them. Maybe they can help. Should we, should we leave yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So, I'm going into the mode there. So 1983 began, ran for five seasons. Um, 
the interesting thing is the fifth season kind of took a different different angle on the series in that they were captured in the fifth season and they had to work for um i can't even remember the character's name but he was the person that was after them at that time it wasn't colonel decker like I'm lost on what you're Somebody talking about. Somebody else. That's the I fifth, didn't even know fifth that. season. They were captured. I obviously haven't got that far, though. Yeah, they were captured, and uh, they were persuaded to work for the government again. Um, oh, so it really changed then, didn't it? Yeah, so they were on various different missions for the government oh. at that point. That's so interesting. So the original casting, they didn't want George Peppard. Didn't want him? Didn't. Well, he, well, he wasn't... They didn't say they didn't want him. But they wanted somebody else. James Coburn, they wanted to be Han- Hannibal. Don't know why that didn't work out. At the time, George Peppard had just been fired from Dynasty. He was supposed to play Blake Carrington in Dynasty. Uh, and he'd been fired because he was not very nice, apparently. Really? Yeah. And then he was offered the part on the A-Team, and he took it. And he firmly believed that he would be the star of the show. And he wasn't, was he? No. Who was your star of the show? Well, the star of the show was Mr. T, wasn't it? B.A. Oh, he, be- he became the oh, star Oh, yeah, he became. Of the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, unofficially, I think it had to be Murdoch, didn't it, really? It Murdoch was, was all right, but was he, idiot, wasn't, wasn't he? he wasn't the one that got the following. He wasn't the one that George Peppard got really annoyed at the fact that people liked him more than him. He, he, so, was the problem in, uh, within the cast then? Oh, yeah, on the set. They didn't get on at all. Dirk, uh, Dirk Benedict plays face, tells a story about being sat between the two of them and. And uh, Peppard turned to him and said, would you tell the one with the gold not to deliver his line so quickly in the next scene? Oh. And so he'd lean over and Mr. T would be laughing his head off. And he said, uh, George says, can you not deliver your line? Oh, so my. Well, it got that bad, apparently. And that's probably why they didn't carry on then? Yeah, and I think a couple of seasons in, Mr. T became the highest paid one of all of them. I don't think George Peppard was very happy with that either. Well, he was a movie star then, wasn't he? Well, yeah. B.A. Well, originally, Peppard was the movie star. He was the Hollywood star. Breakfast at Tiffany's, all of those things. He was the big name, or so he thought. I've got an interesting fact here, Jason. B.A. never actually says, I pity the fool. I know. Uh, so you told me that, and I, I had to read it on here because I didn't believe you. Yeah. And it says, the catchphrase, just like, apparently, play it again, Sam, and beam me up, Scotty, never actually appeared. Beam me up, Scotty, that must have appeared, must not it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like all that. He actually used the word suckers. <laughs> That's the main one he used. So God, it doesn't sound as good coming from us English, does it? No. You know when the Americans say suckers. Yeah, we just sound ridiculous. I, I, I personally do. Yeah, you do. I can hear it. <laughs> suckers. I'm gonna get you, suckers. Do you want some of this, you suckers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come and get some. Get me some nuts. Get me some. That, there's a picture of the van here. It's grey. I know. Unbelievable. I'm learning so much today, Jason. Keep the facts coming. I'm enjoying it. So let's this. talk about uh, the rest of the cast. Come on, then. Dirk Benedict didn't play face in the pilot episode. No, he didn't. I remember that. Can't remember the guy's name. Well, but you it don't wasn't need to. Dirk Benedict. He wasn't. He didn't play it half as good. Well, I don't think that they. I don't think he he found the character, did he? He wasn't the woman. We never had time, did he? To and be all fair. that kind of stuff. He never that, really had time. But face was. But then again, like you said, you know, he just had more time to become that smooth, suave, yeah, face man. I don't think the, other, the original guy had that chance. So. Fulbright. General Fulbright was the name of the guy they worked for Your in the last series. Uh, oh God, a, did you just find that? No, it just popped really, in there. You're very good, aren't you? No, it, it comes eventually. Mm. <laughs> Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Dirk Benedict didn't play face. Howley Mad Murdoch uh, was Dwight Schultz and always was. Who Dwight what? Schultz. Dwight Schultz. But mm. I'm not saying that with a lisp. It's Dwight. Well, I thought you were saying it with a lisp. <laughs> no. Um... Uh, and they had a girl in it, didn't they? Who got kicked out eventually? Yeah, and they replaced it with another girl, who got kicked out. The just... girls only lasted one season. Um, Melinda Kalea, Kalea. There she is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. She left because everyone ganged up on her. It says it. Yeah. Well, apparently the story goes that she wanted to be one of the A team. She didn't want to be a girl. They wanted her to be a girl. You know, the reporter and all that. But she wanted to be. She wanted to have an Uzi and all the business. And she wanted to be part of the A-team. And uh, the producers weren't having any of that. So she got kicked off. And they brought in somebody they thought would be more feminine. And she played Tanya. Was it Tanya? I have no idea. Um, what was her name? Marla. 
I can I can read you the little excerpt I, I've got here. Oh, go on then. It go. says, "We'll never know the pati- we'll never know the particulars of why Melinda Coolia 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 Coolia, who played Team's first feisty journalist psychic, was written out of the second series season actually." Uh, but there was seemed to be bad blood between her and Peppard from the beginning. She claimed the atmosphere was terrible, and and they all ganged up on her. Well, it sounds like Mr. Peppard wasn't a very nice man because well, it sounds like, it? I've seen an interview with Marla Healy. Marla Heasley, who yeah. played Tonya, the next girl to come in, and she says that on the first day of filming, he went up to her and said, "We don't want you here." <gasps> None of us want you in this. Welcome. Yeah. Oh, God, oh, that's horrible, isn't it? Though it was a bit it's horrible a, to know that, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it was a bit of a chauvinistic show all round, wasn't it? It was, it was a guy show. It was aimed at, at boys, wasn't it? To be fair, all the lead characters were boys. The girls never really did fit in because they weren't written in well, and I think it's clear that somebody somewhere wanted a female character in it, but the cast didn't. It's especially, the glam, though, isn't it? Especially George Peppard. 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 Yeah, but like we like we've said this, they all relate to each other, except actually no, Street Hawk didn't have a girl in it at all, did it? No. I mean, Night Rider did. You had the Bonnie and April. Yeah. Airwolf. I don't think that did either, did it? Oh yeah, no, it, it did, did, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the next one. But they all had that little glamour in it, didn't they? Yeah, but just didn't seem to work in the A team. I remember as a kid. Too violent, that's why. Even though no one was ever killed in the A team. I think I had all the A team toys, but I didn't have an Amy figure. Didn't really want one as a kid. Why? So, I don't know. You didn't have the van? Yeah, I had the van. Well, why didn't you have the figures then? No, I had the figures, I just didn't have an Amy figure. I had all the other figures. Did they have an Amy want, figure? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. But I didn't have the Amy figure. Why? Don't know. That was just me as a kid. Sexy. Because she was a girl. Sexist. My eight-year-old self wasn't into girls. What were you into then? Toys. Oh. Oh, I see now. See what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Apparently, um, BA quit Did during you? the fourth season. All right. That's all I know. For it what says reason? he. It says he was he fit. Uh, he fit. He didn't fit. He didn't have a fit. He definitely didn't have a fit. He quit. Um. Because he had a loss in the family. So he got helicoptered out and all that, and he just quit. But they convinced him to come back. So th- there might be an episode or a couple of episodes that you probably don't see much of him in it. All right. Season four, apparently. So uh, Hannibal Smith was the master of disguise, wasn't he? Helen Slater. <laughs> no, we've moved on. Oh, already. sorry. He he was the master of disguise, wasn't he? Oh, hey. Eh? Do you remember in the opening when he's in that big like monster lizard or whatever it is? Yeah. And he opens the face. Oh. And it always used to make me laugh that in the opening... There was one of the Silotrons, what were they called, from Battlestar Galactica, the it was. robots. Yeah, I know what you mean. And Face was in it, who was also in Battlestar Galacta. Galactica. Oh, yeah, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> and that used to make me have a little chuckle when I was a kid. That I'm sure that was that. done on purpose. It must have been. Yeah. Because they could have given that to anyone, couldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, some of his disguises were just outright racist. I remember one of these disguises where he blacked up. Who did? Hannibal, Hannibal Smith. And then he played a Chinese man in one of the earlier scenes very badly. You could just never get away with it, could you? No, it's a oh, it was horrendous. <laughs> what did you think of the film? The recent film? Yeah. Oh, I didn't like it. I didn't. I watched it once and I can't really remember much about they it. They haven't even commissioned the second one, have they? No. They were going to. But they, they've said no. I don't. You just can't remake something like that. Not for us. They tried to make it for a new audience and that's what they have to do, I think, because... It's like that. That's what's that was what was wrong with Superman Returns, is that um, the director tried to make it for the fans of Superman, and you will never do that because you won't replace Christopher Reeve and all that kind of stuff. And because of that, it suffered a little bit. You're very right, but I like that side of it. Yeah, so did I. That was its saving grace for me. Whereas if he'd concentrated on just making a film that we may not have enjoyed, it may have been a bigger box office success. Mm. Well, this proof, and the Man of Steel's worked for some reason. So, People like it. Yeah, with the A team, they tried to do that. I think and just made a, a, a standalone film, and it didn't work. Didn't like it. We didn't like it, and unfortunately, those who were new to the A team didn't like it either. Well, you've think. got to remember as well when the A team was out the series, there was no die-hard films about then. Although if they were, they were just out. So, bringing that in like now, 
Do you know, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like the action they've got. You can't. I mean, the A Team now, for instance, like that film, for instance, it just just didn't work because of there's so many out there. Whereas then, I don't think there was that sort of film out there then. No, it just didn't work, did it? No. It says here, George Peppard smoked three packs a day, Blimey. cigars. Blimey. We have to talk about <laughs> the uh, the fact that nobody ever actually got killed. No one ever got killed. Uh, it, that's actually inaccurate because General Fulbright actually got shot in the back and died in the last season. He's the only person to have ever died. He actually died? Yeah. He's the only person to have ever died in the A-Team. Previously, the seasons before that, there was hundreds of thousands of machine gun bullets flying around everywhere and nobody got hurt. Even the opening had cars flipping upside down. I mean, guns on top of cars. And no Rockets got hurt. being shot. I mean, they came out of the sheds with tanks. And no one got hurt. Well, what they used to do was they used to buy stock footage, didn't they? So if, if it was a car chase and they wanted a big explosion, instead of going to the expense of filming a big car explosion, they'd buy some stock footage of the, the same car exploding. So there'd be a car chase, they'd stick in this stock footage, the car would explode into little bits, and then they'd cut back to their car just on fire, and the blokes <laughs> the blokes get out and go, oh, my head, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? And then the, the other great thing about it was that they the A team would be captured and locked in a barn that happened to have a load of tools, all and the, some sheet metal, and all machinery. the machinery for guns that you could ever wish for. But the thing is that they like they were attacked with guns, but in one episode they built a machine that threw cabbages at the people with guns, and they won the cabbage with the cabbages. Yeah, yeah. How? It was always my favourite bit, though, when that music kicked in and you had the montage of them building something. Every episode had the yeah. same, didn't it? <laughs> I was going to say to you, I wonder why it only lasted five seasons. Well, I've, I'm getting I'm getting to grips with it now. But we loved it, didn't we? Oh, I loved it. I was in the was fan another, club. It was another Saturday morning programme, afternoon programme, got some it? little 8 by 10 photographs and a cap with the A-team on it and everything. I wonder what happened to that stuff. Well, look at this. I know. I've survived. I've kept this thing. I don't know how I've kept it. Did you, do you know what BA stands for? Apart from Bad Attitude. His name, isn't character it, name. Isn't it something ridiculous? Bosco Albert. The Albert just doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Bosco, Bosco does it? Albert Baracus. <laughs> Bosco um, Albert Baracus. Do you know what? So where's Mr T come from then? That's Mr T's name. But did they ever use Mr T in it? No, that's his name. He's yeah, but the they actor. never used that in it? No. Oh, I he, thought they his used real it name is it, Lawrence it? something. Oh. But oh, I thought they used it in it. I tell you what though. You'd think that he would have learned never to accept a glass of milk off Hannibal, wouldn't you? And be thrown on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ain't got no plane, fool. I don't, I don't think, think he ever, ever said, said that, did that, no. No. I'm not going on any plane until you give me a hamburger with some drugs in it. Or a glass of milk. Then yeah. you'll knock me out and then I'll wake up halfway across America. And Strapped. Then fall for it again on the way back. Yeah. I don't know how it survived, do you? <laughs> Fight scenes were great, though, weren't they? There was always, always a slow motion shot of BA throwing somebody over his head, wasn't there? So I'm, I'm still struggling with. They used cabbage and lettuce. <laughs> yeah, they built a cabbage throwing machine. I can't remember which episode it was, but it just sticks in my mind from when I was a kid. Because even as a kid, I remember thinking, well, that's just ridiculous. Those men have got guns. <laughs> so I'm dodging bullets, and they're dodging cauliflowers. <laughs> Cauliflowers. Cauliflowers. That's unbelievable. I can't believe they actually used an episode with that. I know. Did it get more kiddified then as it went on? Like more for the youngsters? I, it struggled, didn't it? Again, like all these things, in the last seasons it struggled. Season four wasn't... The ratings weren't as good as they had been. Tensions were high on the set between Mr T and and George Peppard. They tried to take it in another direction in the fifth season to try and revive it, so they'd been captured and were working so, for the government again, and that didn't work. How how did it do more than Knight Rider, and how did it do more than Street Hawk? How did Airwolf do more than all them? I don't know. Well, Street Hawk was only one season. How many yeah. seasons was Knight Rider? Three? Three, yeah. Yeah, but you say, we spoke about this before, didn't we? You say one season. It was only six episodes, wasn't it? Tw- of what? Street Hawk. 
Was it? Yeah. All right. Well, 12, maximum. I can't remember. It's probably 12. And yet, Knight Rider's 22, and 18 was 22 as well, per season. Doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Hmm. Interesting. And you know, we had a conversation, that, just going back to the van, you know, we said about all the, the... It was great that you had a black kit Knight Rider, you had a black Airwolf, it was black Streethawk, and then the black A-Team. It actually, it actually wasn't black, was it? No, it was black and grey. So it didn't apparently. fit in, did it? Well, we, we're not convinced. We don't know. Yeah, but my bed sheet doesn't lie, does it? The bed sheet doesn't lie. This is official merchandise from 83. <laughs> and look, it's grey. It is grey, you're right. With black. There was an episode of the A-Team... With Boy George in it. Do you remember that? Do you really want to hurt me? Yeah. <laughs> it would have been great if he said that line. Somebody held a gun up to him and he said, Do you really want to hurt me? And they shot him with a cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was horrendous. I remember it. It was horrendous. He, with him was, in it? he was horrendous. Re- yeah. well, what did he do? Was he playing his part? I heard, yeah, he was playing himself, playing Boy George. I heard an interview with him um, on the radio quite a while back talking about the day that he had on set and he said it was just surreal and ridiculous yeah but you couldn't put that sort of I mean, how did that character get into a programme like that because he was massive at the time and it was just a ratings thing wasn't it <sighs> or, or Boy George's agent slept with someone and got him a part on the A-team I, I mean that's that's just conjecture I'm not saying that happened I don't want to be sued conjecture what's that mean I'm always teaching you big words yeah that's a, that's a cracker that one hearsay hearsay right. well why don't you just say hearsay then because it's not quite the same meaning but it's the only way that I can no, explain you, you've it you've got no etiquette what yeah that's right <laughs> so I roll <laughs> other guest stars in it were Dean Stockwell who uh, Al from Quantum Leap Al we'll do Quantum Leap I forgot about that um William Perry, the famous uh, Chicago Chicago Bulls. Oh, well, don't try and make out that we know. When I was a kid, I had a Chicago Bulls bag, but I knew nothing about American football. Well, we don't know. We don't and the only American football player's name that I knew was William the Refrigerator. What's his face? Oh, yeah, I know him. You know what I mean? Well, we don't do baseball over here, do we? We haven't got a clue, have we? No, it's not baseball, Greg. It's American football. See, we really haven't got a clue. <laughs> What's the difference? Oh, one's got a bat, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm only joking. I'm actually not that thick. <laughs> Um, and then Isaac Hayes, the singer, was in an episode, and of course, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, but we all know why. Do we? But yeah, of course. Oh, this is my wrestling knowledge coming in. Yeah, come on then. Right, Hulk Hogan. Um, you all know this because it's just that Jason's a little bit thick. Um, he was a massive. The wrestling was becoming really big in that sort of time, and he was becoming a really huge wrestling star. And also, he had a film out. Which was obviously making Hulk Hogan really big. So, Mr. T was in WrestleMania 1 and 2. Right. To promote WrestleMania, the big first. Is that why he's been accepted into the Hall, Hall of Fame? Hall of Fame, yep. Yeah, he, he made them lots of money, they reckon, but it obviously made him lots of money as well. And he tag teamed in the first WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan against Roddy Piper and someone else, I can't remember. And in WrestleMania 2, he actually had a boxing match with Roddy Piper. Right. So he's a massive. So the connection is all there. So obviously he did a favour him, and he brought him into a team, and they did it like that. It's just I just suppose it's one of them. Like you said, it's not what you know. It's who you know helping each other out. Yeah, got you a big part here, mate. There you go. Here's a, another lump of money for you. It's all. It's all there. So we are big fans of the A team, aren't we? I think you're probably bigger than I am of the A team. Yeah, but but again, we talk about this every episode. In that, is it that I'm a fan of the actual content of the A team, or am I a fan of the memories that it stirs? For me, if you ask me that question, I'd say I can't remember what you said. <laughs> uh, it would be the the second one. It'd be the one with the. I think it just brings the memories, memories of watching it on a Saturday evening. Yeah, I don't think it's with the, your family. Yeah, I don't think it's the fact that I love the program. I think it's just that. Although I did, I'm just saying, if you compared it to Night Rider. It wouldn't have a patch on it for me, but it was it was the van that pulled me into it. Obviously, it was always the cars that got me into it, or the bike, or the helicopter. No? Yeah, the van didn't that didn't suck you into it. Yeah, I'm sure it did. It must have done. I mean, look at the toys. It was always around the van. The van it says here the 1983 black and metallic grey Ventura van used in the A Team, and with yeah, its characteristic say- red stripe. 
Did it say it changed later on in the series? No. It wasn't grey later on, though, was it? I don't know what happened there. Because the 80s toy, the 80s toy van is black. It's just black. It makes you wonder why they would do it grey, because it doesn't look as good, does it, anyway? No. I mean, this drawing we've got in front of us on this bed sheet, it looks rubbish. There were other professional wrestlers in it. Wrestlers? wrestlers. <laughs> well, the professional wrestlers. Oh, professional All right, Sean wrestlers. Connery, how are you? Oh, Miss Money Penny. <laughs> there were other professional wrestlers in it. Go on, then name them. Um, I'll see if I know them. Professor Toru Tanaka. Nope. Richie the Dragon Steamboat. Richie. Yeah. The Dynamite Kid. Richie the Dragon Steamboat. Ricky. You said Richie. Did I? Well, what an idiot. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. That's better. Do you know him? Of course I do. What? Well. Well, no, I don't personally. <laughs> He's not popping around later for a chat. <laughs> the Dynamite Kid. Yeah, he was He was Bulldog's... British Bob, Bulldog's partner. Bobby the Brain Heenan. He was a manager. Davy Boy Smith, I know him. British he was Bulldog. The, yeah, he was the British Bulldog. Dynamite Kid's tag team partner. Right. Big John Studd. Oh, um, yeah. Greg the Hammer Valentine. Great name. Great name. And the wrestling interviewer and announcer, Mean Gene, mean Oakland. Gene Oakland. He was brilliant. What the world is watching. That was the worst impression I could ever have done. <laughs> I actually, as soon as I did it, I was like, that's horrendous. You know, all know, everybody knows that I'm the one who's good at impressions. Well, I mean, well, listen to this. Are you doing my Sean Connery then? Well, no, it's not that. If you want to talk impressions and, and impersonations and whatever, anything, it's the Night Rider, isn't it? Vroom, vroom. There you go. It's kit. Do you know, you was once described to me. I was once described to you. That's it, really. Oh. Right. You just described. So, yeah, the theme song was written by Mike Post and Pete Carpenter. Who? Whoever Pete Carpenter is. Was he the voiceover guy, do you reckon? Don't know. Who was that voiceover guy? Don't know. Maybe somebody does. Maybe he could write in. Yeah, maybe he could. If he's still Can around. Get him to do a little voiceover for us. Wow. That would be good, wouldn't it? If you're bored... If you're fed up and you've got nothing to do, maybe you could turn on the 80s podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Greg. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? So we're going to leave it there for the 18. It's 